So I wanted to talk a little bit about the foot and kind of what it does as we move through walking and running and things that it might play a part in depending on you know, if you have anything from up the chain and back, hip pain, knee pain, or maybe you're getting specific pain in the foot or in the ankle. Could be due to a previous injury, might not be, might just be habits. Um, but the foot's quite interesting in that it's a structure that can go through both a softening stage where the whole foot sort of can mold to any surface and then it can go into this really rigid structure which gives you something quite spring-like to push off of. Um, so you've got a few movements going on through each phase. Pronation and supination are the words we use to combine all these triplanar movements depending on the phase you're going through. So the first one being pronation is a dorsiflexion of the foot and that happens at the talocrural joint. And then we also have something that happens sideways and that happens down at this subtalar joint down here. And you can probably see it better from the back, but it wiggles like this. And we're looking at E version. So what that means is the heel going to the outside of your body. All right? and what that does is it creates an ability for this tibia, this bone, to sort of slide down and allow this navicular bone and talus to drop into the inside of your foot. We then have rotation as well. So with pronation, we get abduction. And this is an axis coming straight down. So if you look straight down in your foot, it's the ability for it to twist this way. And you're kind of looking at the forefoot. And that axis is right in the middle here. So your toes are going to go out this way. So the combined movements would be dorsiflexion, eversion with that heel coming out, that calcaneus, and then your toes going this way. And what that does is all these bones in here unlock and they kind of spread out like this and allow you to absorb shock. If any of those movements are impeded, then it can have repercussions up the chain in that maybe the block of, say, this frontal plane movement of that heel going sideways, if you can't do it there, then you might try and do it somewhere else. Maybe the knee, maybe you try to create excessive at the hip because that's a movement that's available to the hip not so much available at the knee, so you might end up with a bit more of a nagging pain at the knee, whereas, say, the hip could be a little bit more of a comes-on-after-time related thing. If you have a loss of dorsiflexion or plantar flexion, that changes how far your knee can travel past your toes, or how easy it is when you're pushing off the ground for you to be able to get your knee straight. This rotational movement is really important because if it doesn't happen here, then you might get excessive at the hip. Or you might just lock up in general and maybe you start twisting more at the spine or the pelvis. Depending on your particular mobility, everyone has different levels of connective tissue tense, tension and some people have more mobility than others. If we look at pronation, that's that phase we talked about with dorsiflexion, eversion and abduction. So that's as I land on this foot and my knee goes past my toes. Now when you're running and walking that may not go all the way past but definitely as you go to push off you need that available range in through the ankle. When you push off the ground we get the opposite. So my foot's up on the toes, my knee needs to be able to be straight and what I'm getting is plantar flexion my toes are adducting, they're coming this way, but then I'm also inverting my heel. So it's this, toes are going this way, and my heel is scooping in like this. And that creates a nice rigid lever for you to push off of. If you can't get into that, then you lose kind of some of your passive energy system, and it leads to using more energy, maybe getting fatigued faster, Maybe your calf starts to do a little more work because your Achilles tendon can't go through its nice elastic recoil and lengthening phase for that passive energy. Maybe your ITB isn't able to also absorb energy when you load into the hip and go into adduction, which then leads into pushing off. Um, a lot of things can kind of get messed up. It doesn't need to be perfect, 
depends on the task you're trying to do, depends on how long you're trying to do the task, and depends on the power needed. Some people just want to walk, and they don't need as much available range and strength and conditioning. But it's an important thing to consider. So some very simple drills for self-assessment would be to check each available range. There's some neat apps you can get which look at um, degrees of range. I think in the iPhone it's maybe built in and Android has some different ones available. All pretty free for the basic you know, thing that you need. Let's say that this was my phone. I put it on my shin and I'm measuring the degrees. I'm just looking to measure a different side to side. But then I'm also looking, do I get well, maybe 35 to 40 degrees? If there's a bigger difference between them, maybe five degrees plus, say you got 35 on one side and 40 on the other, you're kind of starting to see a difference and maybe your way that you stride and run is gonna be a little bit different. Um, so you need to try and maybe even those out. That might be because of the Taylor cruel joint. That might be this bigger one up here. But remember, that heel also needs to swing out into E version. So as you're looking down at your foot and you drop in, is that heel going that way? And if it's not, say it's in inversion like this, and you look down and you're like, hey, that guy's just not even moving, then you can start to think that, hey, maybe I'm moving enough here, but not enough down in here. Or maybe you see that your toes aren't AB backing and going out a little bit. This is gonna happen more towards max range. You're gonna see quite a lot of movement kicking in. So as I'm here, that whole arch really flattens down and my toes go that way. My weight's going down into my medial arch. For the other ranges, a little bit trickier. Plantar flexion, simple test. Can you sit on your foot? Got full plantar flexion. Adduction, a little bit different. You might be able to pull it. Is it comfortable to go that way? You might notice that some of your toes are actually already abducted and permanently that way. Permanent in the sense that they're like that all the time, but they are changeable if you really want to work at it. So I'm looking at, maybe you've got that bunion going on. Maybe that bunion hasn't turned into a bony ossification and it's sort of reducible and you can change it. So that would be considering I need to be better at AD ducting. But if I'm AB ducting and going out uh, this way, then I'm creating excessive movement in an area that doesn't need it, so I'm probably lacking it somewhere else. Things to think about. Inversion, a little different. Can I plantar flex? And can my heel swoop in? Can I dorsiflex? And can my heel ever? So, this itself is a bit of a mobility drill. So I'm going down and in. I'm creating that range. And you see my hips are really starting to swing out. Can I keep my hips straight? And create the movement just down at the ankle. Really common to have deficits here after ankle sprains. Foot sprains, especially sports where you get stepped on your feet. Um, your body's pretty good at taking that pain you feel if you're continuing to play and creating the compensation somewhere else. Harder to find, but still locatable. So worth addressing any injury, even if you got a niggle, try and get onto it early before that range becomes uh, lost and you have to work to get that range back. That's going to take a lot more time than having an available range, but just not being able to control it. Um, so have a look, test your ankles. If you've got any issues, post some questions. Maybe I can help you out. Maybe I can shoot you in the right direction. Um, but see how you go.